That way everybody is prospering. You are having children without parents, producing pastors everywhere. People that will become arm robbers, kidnappers, hijackers, ritual killers, because of the sin that is in their blood. Minimal resources, but the world can reach it. Africa has all the resources, but look at the rate of poverty, destruction, this devastation, penury, starvation, degradation. All kinds of shameful expression. Children that have no fathers. Roaming the street. Bringing challenges, problems. And robbers. Everywhere. Dealing with generational causes. That's our topic for today. I will just read three scriptures. Out of the mouth of two or three witnesses shall my word is established. Let me show you God's word. At least let me show you three. That say generational causes cannot end as long as the people continue in idolatry. It, could ne- it will never end as long as there is idolatry. Idol worshiping in your generational line. It will never end. You say, oh, Pastor, what is generational cause? What is the generational cost? Does it mean if I'm hungry, I'm, uh, I, I, I am uh, uh, suffering from generational causes? No. What is the generational cost? A generational cost, according to Bible perspective anyway, is perpetuation of negative patterns. Negative patterns. In a family lineage, negative patterns, negative trending, negative manifestation. In a family lineage, the negative pattern it could include behavioral patterns, consequences, negative patterns could include. Behavioral patterns, it could include attitudinal patterns, it could include financial patterns, it could include psychological patterns. I'm going to explain this, but I want to read the Bible first. Perpetuation of this thing is highest in Africa. Africa, what is this source? without a cost. How did we get this far? And everybody wants to have a bouncing baby boy. Everybody wants to produce the governor of uh, Lagos State. Everybody wants, but they don't reason that a pastor cannot be a governor. They have not read their Bible well. That even in the Bible times, pastors were not allowed into the church service. They were an abomination to the to the environment. Why are we protecting and celebrating nonsense in our own time? Today is the day of repentance. God will forgive anything that somebody has repented. I don't care how long your father messed up. I don't care how long your mother messed up. I don't care who messed up before you. But the truth is today, if you can repent, at least the generational cost in your life will be broken. In the name of Jesus Christ. When I came to Lagos, to this part of Lagos newly, because I mean I've come to Lagos two times in my lifetime. When I came to this part of Lagos newly, that was in 2002. I come to Lagos actually the first time in 1990. 2002, I came to this part of Lagos. I used to live at the other side of Lagos, Badagri Expressway. When I came to this side of Lagos, and by adventure, by the grace of God, I happened to pass a church in Omale Phase 2. I was opportune to meet one woman who was one of our suppliers there. She was supplying us sand for the building project. And by the reason of being a supplier, she became a member of our church. 
then in the estate. She called me one day. She said, Pastor, I have a problem. I said, what is the problem? She said, my mother gave birth to me when she was 18 years old. I said, what does that, how does that matter? He said, Pastor, I gave birth to this, my daughter, when I was 18 years old. Because of her, I dropped out of school. I said, what, what about that? You are not the first person that dropped out of school. Several people have dropped out of school before. He said, Pastor, this is my daughter. She is 18 years old as I'm talking to you. She is pregnant. I said, too late. Do you know the person that impregnated? I said, no. Nobody knows. Only the girl knows, and the girl doesn't want to talk to anybody. There are certain issues of life that have been perpetuated across the family lines. If we will be honest, parents, fathers, mothers, if we will be honest with ourselves, we can help our children trace the, the, the source of this problem, and we can solve them. Every negative pattern perpetuated across the family line is a generational cause. It could be sickness, diabetes, hypertension, asthma, trachoma. If your father or your mother had any of the diseases I've just mentioned, including several other ones, when you are 40 years old, you will know. Your mother doesn't need to tell you, your father doesn't need to tell you. How will you know? You will have that sickness. If your father had hypertension, or glaucoma, or asthma, or diabetes, or sicknesses or diseases in the blood, when you are 40 years old, you just born a little boy, you are running up and down, it's like you don't have any problem. Or blindness of any size, of any degree. If your father or your mother had such issues of life, when you get to 40 years, the alarm will blow, the sickness will come and take salute, and the hospital will tell you, you are having an issue, an issue of life that will not lead you until death to you pass, and if you don't settle generational cause, you will hand to pass the sickness to your children. And their children will hand over to their own children. Until the third and the fourth generation. And if the third or the fourth generation is coming, and one of them go to worship idol, they will multiply the intensity, the ferocity, the accuracy of the disease, of the sickness, of the cause. And it continues to perpetuate from generation to generation to generation to generation. Let me show you three scriptures so that you know that God was serious. There are more than 36 scriptures. Let me just show you three. So that you will know that this one is a done deal, not negotiable deal. God will never go back on it. He will not go back on it. So we who are children of God that go to church, we must be serious and not be playing and, and dancing with sin. Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20. Let me read from verse 3. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto thy third and the fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. 
Exodus 34. Let's be staying in Exodus for a while. Go to chapter 34. Exodus 34. I'll read verses 6 and 7. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgressions and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and the fourth generations. Did you see it? Okay. Go to Numbers chapter 18, chapter 14. Numbers chapter 14, verse 18. Okay, let me read from 17. And now at this sixty, let the power of my Lord be great, according as thou hast spoken, saying, The Lord is long suffering and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression, and by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers. Upon the children unto the third and the fourth generation. Please, sir, did you see it in your Bible? Hello, uncle. Did you see it in your Bible? What are we saying? God is gracious and merciful. But not exonerating the guilty. See, if you have read some stories of certain communities in Africa and what they did with the white missionaries that came to preach the gospel, some of them they cooked them and used them to, to drink palm wine. They ate the Yubo. Some roasted the Yubo and chewed them like soya. And God said you should not worship anything. You go to some houses, you see white bear, you see tailor, you see monkey, you see uh, horse, you see cow. God said, if you worship anything in the similitude of whatever God has created in the air, in the sky, in the moon, in the sun, in the forest, white lion, green beast, whatever, when you worship them, you bow down to them, you go to flat, you bend your knee. They take you there, they say you are not a member. But this is what you do before you enter. You bend down, you are worship. God say, you, you are a guilty man and I won't leave you. I will punish you in your lifetime. And then that punishment will continue with your children and continue with your children's children. So, negative pattern in a family lineage is what is called generational cause. It could be financial issue, it could be mat matrimonial issue, it could be gen a generational, it could be a medical issue, it could be something that has to do with your pocket, it could be a mental situation that everybody just goes mad to a certain degree. That's a generational cause. And because we cannot, we were not the one to control our fathers and our mothers and their fathers and their mothers. They could have handed over some things to us, which are working in us. Some of us will never know it until you clock 40. On your 40th birthday, hypertension will tell you, good afternoon, sir. Diabetes will tell you, I did hear, I did hear, blood sugar issue. Asthma will say, ah, now good with that, good with that, they catch you. You will be shaking like Shakespeare. Generational issue. 
Nothing can stop it until men will stop idolatry. Nothing. Proverbs 26 verse 2. Proverbs chapter 26 verse 2. A cause, he said, like the sparrow, like flying. A cause, causeless, shall not come. Generational poverty. Poverty that you, 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 the day you go, they say people are carrying, are carrying load at the bus stop. You say, let me just go and carry this load. You go. The day you go, that day, the trailer will not come. They, they think that you are body, you carry and come. Anyway, you enter, all the doors close. You enter supermarket business, that day supermarket close. Anywhere you enter, door locked. To tell you that you, you are somebody with a mark like Esau. Or somebody like, with a mark like Cain. Anywhere get Cain enter, houses will disappear. Because God said you will sleep. You must sleep inside the bush. You can never sleep inside the house. A fugitive and a vagabond shall you be forever. Causes. 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 So, we are suffering what? Because of the sin of our grandfather. Now, if we in our generation perpetuate that sin, what happened? We initiate a new cause. Which will be amplified by an existing cause. Just as if your father was a member of a cult, Shongo or Ogu or whatever it is. It could be Mami Water Cult. Your father was dancing it. The cause is already upon you to say one degree. And you strong come and dance it. You, more, you potentiate and magnify and amplify that cause upon your children and your children's children. That is why there are certain places you go to in Oweri and some parts of and some parts of Imo State, you will see children, you will know these are pure money water children. They can never marry. No matter how how close they are to it. It can be on the day of payment of dowry. The man drops down and dies. Something will happen to make sure that that marriage doesn't hold. These are real issues of life. So that's why everybody needs to be serious. In this point, I expected everybody to come to church because most of us suffering what we are suffering now. Accommodation problems. All the things we are suffering now can be traceable to generational causes. Pastor, what are the signs of generational causes? How do they come that I've told you? Principally, idolatry. Idolatry. And spiritual rebellion. Walking against God. I will never go to church again. I will never serve Him. Let God do whatever He can do. Spiritual rebellion. Spiritual rebellion. Number two. Unresolved sins. Transgression. Unresolved sin. You continue committing a particular sin. You see nothing they happen. I take ground. I pull ground. Get it back. Unresolved sin will perpetuate generational causes. Number three, family patterns and behavior. If you wake up and you see that your father is a drunkard and your mother is a shower, walk on yourself because if you don't, if you don't do something about it, you end up a drunkard. You got to do something about your life. Your life is important to God. No matter how merciful God is, no matter how gracious God is, God must punish you. That's the only reason to prove to men that they don't need to live a life of a sinful person. God has to punish them. If God doesn't punish them, what's the difference between a sinner and a righteous man? How do you know the difference between a child of a sinner and a child of a righteous man? Child of the sinner go to school, carry first. Child of righteous man go to school, carry first. What is the difference? God puts a difference there. No matter how you study, if you are a child of a juju priest, you will come last. If they cut your brain and put book inside and cover it for you to go and write it down, you will fail. God must punish it. God must punish it. He's a just God. He's a righteous God. He's a merciful God. But he must punish sin. 
So some of the things we are suffering today because of the sin of our fathers. But that we have to say, we have the right to settle it because we are now in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Now quickly I will give you seven signs that you know you have a generational cause in your family. Please don't misunderstand me. Everybody on this earth will have hardship. That's not for the fact that you went to work one day and you lost your job once doesn't mean you have a generational cause. But if it is habitual and perpetual, hello, 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 hello. Somebody say habitual. Somebody say perpetual. God help you, you have a, a, a you have the Amplified Bible, First John 3, 8. He said, he that committed sin is of the devil. But he explains it. Everybody can do transgressions. Everybody can make mistakes. Everybody can tell a common lie. Everybody can get angry at one time or the other. That doesn't make you a sinner. What makes you a sinner is living in sin. Habitually and perpetually. You wake up in the morning. Ah! Ogoguru. Now you believe. I better share. Number one, you drink. In the afternoon, you want to go out, ah, I better share you drink. In the evening, I better share you drink. You want to sleep, I better share. That is the sinner. Habitual and perpetual. Hallelujah. Perpetual poverty. Hello, sir. Do you understand what I mean by that? Poverty that refuses to go. You do still make it work, you are poor. You buy a car and fry, you are poor. He said, let me wait at the bus stop to do a good work. You are deep work. That's habitual, habitual poverty is the product of a generational cause. Hello, sir. Let me show you seven signs. If you see any of these signs in your life, you need to cry tonight and roll on the floor. It doesn't matter how much you cry. If God that will forgive us. If God that will arrange us for the future. Seven signs. Seven signs of existence of a generational cause. Number one, barrenness or impotence. Deuteronomy 28, 18. Every form of barrenness, I marry, I no born. Ah, I no born, I no born, I no born, I no born. You try, 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 try. Maybe at the end, you manage to born one, or you collect one from my water at Babish. You ask the road to pay. You ask the road to pay. When you collect fishing from my water, that means you, you, you will suffer and stress and stress to make that child become useful to you, but all your money will just be swept away because you collected the child from my water. Impotence, barrenness is a sign that God is angry. Number two, emotional instability. Emotional instability. Some people's own get to the state of madness. You know a sister that used to get mad one month every year. A brother that used to get mad. Sometimes he would tear his cloth when he wake up. Say, I don't even know what happened to me yesterday. That high level of anxiety. Habitually and perpetually. Maybe once every month. Maybe one day in a month. Sister would tear cloth is a sign of a generational cause. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's good you know this thing so that you don't, you don't become a victim. You don't make 28, 28. Number three, hereditary family sickness, family diseases and sickness. There are certain sicknesses that are known to your family. The day the doctor tells you at your first year birthday that, ah, your BP is high. They are tracing and suspecting that you may be having hypertension. You go home and tell your mommy, mommy, eh, I don't die. Doctors say, I'm possibly having hypertension. He say, my pigeon, no worry. That thing, I get them. Your father will say, oh, my son, so we don't carry this thing for you. Me, sir, I get them. If your father has hypertension, your mother has hypertension. No more. You are on a double. Double dose. The diseases inherent in men, they are products of the sins of your parents. I mentioned some sicknesses here. There are, it's a long list. These are the few ones I can remember now. Hypertension, glaucoma, diabetes, asthma, eye issues. 
eye issues to a certain degree of blindness, they are product of generational causes. Habitually existing in your family, you are a senior sister, get hypertension, they won't wait for them, get hypertension, you are, on, you are just waiting to be 40 years before the hypertension will be announced. It's a product of generational causes. You need to know this thing, oh! Habitual, number five, habitual and perpetual poverty. Poverty that refuses to go. Somebody help you to get a job. Before you work three months in John Hood, they fuck you. You say, okay, let me come and do business. You'll be frying a cara to sell. The only place that you were able to get a shop to fry a cara, Buddha came, that God must send them and demolish your shop. That the property refuses to go in your life. You have done everything possible. You have gone to everywhere. You have prayed all the prayers you know how to pray. But the property becomes a mark on your face. It's a generational issue. Tonight, that poverty is going in Jesus' name. This amen doesn't look like a winning amen. The poverty of the generation carried in your life will go tonight. It doesn't matter the profession. You can be a doctor. Have you not known some poor doctors? I have two doctors. They come to my office from time to time. Pastor waiting there for the boys. As we give them 2,000 naira, and they are grateful, and they are medical doctors. What are we talking about? Have you not known some poor secretaries? Have you not seen some people who are poor and they are teachers? It's not a matter of profession that makes somebody poor. It's what is inside the person. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. God will deliver us from poverty in the name of Jesus Christ. I say I will give you seven ex examples. Family breakdown. Family breakdown. Single parent would. Family breakdown. They try, try, try to marry, make their kids stay in the same room with husband and wife. It is impossible. They try, so they put husband on salary. The husband sit back. They try, 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 try. We don't want to make our pickings separate from the husband. We do, 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 do. At the end, it turned to nonsense. It's the product of a generational cost. Habitual. I know one woman, she has, she has had seven husbands in her lifetime. She's a very nice woman. She arranges the house. She sacrifices herself to be able to make their husband happy. She cooks the best food with some days heavy meat, some days heavy beans, some days heavy, heavy fish. But the husband still separates from her. She is carrying original, original mommy water, mommy water, generational cost. No matter how good she has been, husbands want to run away. She has not been able to keep a man for three years. They will marry very happy, very happy. They will marry. Before one year, something will and say, No, I'm going. Oh God, explain to us what I'm saying. I cannot tell anybody. For no reason, the husbands are running. Solution is not to go and marry another husband. Solution is to go and break the cost. To break the cost. And take yourself free so that you can marry and enjoy your marriage. Family issues. Marriage is still to last. Divorce. Some, they don't even divorce. They don't even have time for later. They just walk away. They walk away. And such men are even happy to say, I have, I have seven children. Two is in Kadena, three is in here. Can you imagine? They have never brought one naira for the, for the progress of the children. It's a generational cost. So those are our sisters that the devil has put under a cause to suffer and they have been tormented to bear children without having support from the fathers of the children tonight. Such causes will be broken in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. What have I not touched now? Extreme and recurrent property. Deuteronomy 28 verse 17. Bastards. There are some people who don't keep back to bastards. Both men and women. 
Born one for Sokoto, born one for Potako, born one for Omunede, born one for Akko, born one for Oba. I can born children everywhere. They are not taking responsibility for anybody. But they clap for themselves that they have 12 children. They have 12 children. One is in Calabar, one is in New York, the other one is in Aba, this one is in Port Harcourt. Meanwhile, you have never paid any chance for fee. Producing pastors everywhere. Sir, being a pastor alone is a cost. Joining into the cost of generation becomes double job party. May the Lord deliver us. In the name of Jesus Christ. I've tried to give you an example of what a generational cost is. And it's trying to identify them. Chronic injuries, recorded sicknesses, Deuteronomy 28, 27. Chronic injuries, chronic injuries, recurrent sicknesses. No ambition, no vision in life, a directional life, directionless life. Deuteronomy 28, verse 17. If you notice this thing recurring around a man, is a man that is under generational cost. Tonight, God will deliver us from generational cost in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, we've come to the topic now. How can one break a generational cost? How can we break out of a generational cost? Anybody can break out of a generational cost if you are serious. Hallelujah. Tonight, people will be breaking out of generational causes in Jesus' name. Anybody can break out if you are serious. Anybody can break out. Don't forget what, what started the cause initially was what? Was sin. It was the sin of our father, maybe our grandfather, maybe our great great grandfather. But the sin was perpetrated in the family, and the family members continue to commit that sin. And even up till now, that they have stopped committing that sin. Thank God for Christianity that has reached everywhere in Africa now. We still find ourselves in those distresses. Because God said this, the cause will continue for two to three generations. As at the time of the Bible, a generation was 150 years. In our time now, a generation is maybe 60 years. So this cause will continue for two to three generations after the person that committed the sin has died. So a generational cause, if nobody commits any additional sin, can last for 300 years. But if another person in that lineage commit the same sin again, they will start counting from that person's sin. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let me explain this. That if your father was a juju worshipper, he had small white bed like this that he used to go and say uh -huh, my, my director chop this or chop this chop this my director may you live long ago a dead bed standing like this and then after his death if after the death of your father nobody does something it means after 300 years that cost will be lifted but if any of your brothers or sisters go and see take over from the ministry from your father and go and say, my director, chop, 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 my director. It means the cost will be extended. Please, do we understand what I'm trying to say? Hallelujah. Okay, so how can we break a generational cost? We will do all the rest of it in prayer, but I will just mention the point. Let me just mention quickly seven, seven points. How we break, how generational causes can be broken. How do we break free from generational causes? Number one. Repentance. See, generational causes don't fly like birds. Why am I suffering what I'm suffering? See, the sin of my ancestors. How do I break through? I need to confess. The only thing that can bring about deliverance where sin is involved is confession of that sin. But I'm not the one that committed the sin. You have to confess on behalf of your brother. You have to confess on behalf of your father. You have to confess your sins. And vow to God that you turn away from those things of your ancestors. That's the first thing to be done. Confession. Repentance. Will bring salvation. Second Chronicles 7, 13 and 14. If 
by God of heaven that there be no rain. And if whatever you plant they refuse to bring the fruit, the Bible says, if my people, you see, we don't respond when we feel hardship, when we see frustration, when we see opposition, when we see something swallowing what we have planted. We continue instead, we look for auntie, brother, sister, for help. If my people call by my name, shall humble themselves and, and pray and call name and turn from their weaknesses, I will forgive their space, I will heal their land. You can stand in the gap. Your father may have died, your mother may have died, your grandmother may have died, but what they committed is affecting you here. You stand in their place and confess their sins and you ask God to forgive them on your behalf. That's what we're going to do tonight. That's the first thing. The first thing to be done that will bring about deliverance from generational causes. Number two. What can we do to break free? Embracing the redemption work of Jesus Christ. I am come that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. It's repenting before God. Asking God, Jesus, come into my life. Accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Master will bring about your complete deliverance. Because the devil, if the devil owns you, you are not born again, it means you are a child of the devil. So the devil can play with you, he can use you to play Goso. He can play with you and dance with you the way he likes, mess with you or frustrate you. But the moment you allow Jesus to enter into your heart, the Holy Spirit begins to fill your life and will not give room to this kind of thing to enter into you. That's why I say to anybody you are poor, I don't despise you. But I will try to preach the gospel to you. Ah, they say that man is preaching prosperity, preaching prosperity, preaching prosperity. If you are not born again, you can never be rich. It's as simple as that. To be rich God's way, sustainable riches of over decades. You can be rich in the morning, and then you can be poor in the evening. But when you are born again, and the Spirit of God is in you, and your wealth comes God's way, you can be rich through generations, through 10, 15 generations. You must be born again. You must be born again. There is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Romans 8, 1 and 2. You must be born again. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Behold, all things have passed away. The causes of the generation. All things have passed away. And all things have become new. You are being tormented by generational causes. Just give your life to Jesus Christ. It's not everybody that goes to church that give, has given life to Jesus. Give your life to Jesus. The moment you give your life to Jesus, you can stand on what God's word in Galatians 3, 13 and 14, that Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law. Because you are now born again. He made a cause for it is written, God is everyone that hung on a tree. But he hung on the tree so that the blessings of Abraham will accrue unto your own account. Hallelujah. How can I break out of generational causes? Number three, prayer and spiritual warfare. Prayer, prayer, prayer. You need to command, decree, declare, pronounce, proclaim, standing on God's word. Because it's part of the warfare. They will be tormenting you. Look at that man. That man, the madman of Gedera. Only that one man had legions of demons. I've told you before, a legion is about 6,100 foot soldiers and 782 horsemen. <laughs> one man is having almost 7,000 demons. Six, if you check the Roman soldier, they cut it. 
category. When they say a legion of soldiers, they mean 6,100 foot soldiers and 782 horsemen. Those riding on horses. So, we got to know something. The devil is a wicked devil. Mary Magdalene was having 70 months. So, demons can enter anybody. They can come and live in a man. That's why you see some men. I met Pella, one of the sons of the great magician Pella. And he was telling me what he was going through before he, be he became born again. They were used to smoking marijuana, cocaine, heroin, all kinds of narcotics. He said, he got to a point where all this money got finished. He will come to his father's house. He will remove two windows. Go and sell it by the roadside to buy cocaine. Next tomorrow, he will come and remove one door. Next tomorrow, he said, that's how he removed all the windows in that uncompleted building. Because when the oil comes as if you want to die, if you don't smoke it, you will die. You don't, that is what a cause is all about. A satanic drive that puts people to sleep. Give your life to Jesus Christ. Take time, we are going to teach you spiritual warfare this month. We are going to teach you spiritual warfare. Stand in the place of prayer. Decree the word of God. Declare it. Pronounce it. And the causes will disappear. Number four. Renouncing. Renunciation. Renouncing. What does it mean? What does this mean? You renounce. Disconnect yourself. I will explain this a little bit. Renounce. Let's say your name is Atta. Your son name is Atta. That's your grandfather's name. Assume that it was your grandfather that was a native doctor, a juju priest that brought the generational cost to the family. Hallelujah. Amen. Right now, you are born again, but your name is still Atta. Second Corinthians chapter 5, 17. The Bible says, Therefore, if anyone be in Christ, he is a new creature. I want you to understand that scripture literally. Understand it literally. What it means is you have been disconnected from the family of Adam. Are we all together, please? And engrafted into the family of God. I saw where did I see an orchard closest to us there? I saw an orchard Masanke inside inside the lower. Where one tree? This branch, orange. This branch, tangerine. This branch, uh, grape. This branch. That's what we mean by engrafting in agriculture. If the plant is having, they belong to the same compound, you can cut one branch and pluck in the other stem and it will grow. That's what God has done to us. Because we are now in Christ, God has put us from their original family and plucked us into the family of God. That's why Jesus can say, I am the branch, and you are the branches. Are we all together here? Because the reason we go to school is not to know book too much, but to be able to apply the book we learn to the scripture. How can you become a member of Jesus Christ's family if they didn't pluck you inside? God said, imagine a tree. I am the stem. You are all branches. You have been incrafted into it. So you can start tonight and denounce it and renounce and say that, yes, attack. From today, you are not a member of the Atas family, you are a member of the family of Jehovah. Therefore, anything that affects Atas family can never affect you. Am I talking to somebody else? That's what we mean by renouncing. Disconnect yourself from that fault that is messing up everybody, that is embarrassing every family member. Disconnect yourself spiritually, and you are going to see a miracle. It's instant miracle. Say, nobody has money. Before you work 5,000, you have a problem of 50,000. Before you are able to count your 10,000, you have a problem of 300,000. That story is history. It's ending in your life today. Because God has disconnected you from that family of poverty. 
The family where they perpetuated poverty and everybody was sick, they used their money to teach sicknesses. That will not be your portion anymore in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So that's what we mean by engrafting. Acknowledge that the family of attack has sinned. Acknowledge that you were a member of that family before. But now, there's a change of story. You are no longer a member of that family. God has disconnected you and engrafted you into the family of Jehovah. You are now a member of Jehovah's family. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, we are going to pray shortly now. Number five. Seeking inner healing and deliverance. Colossians 2, 13 and 14. He said you were all in darkness. You were all in darkness. But now are you the sons of God? It's, and you are carrying some of us have become the sons of God. But we are still carrying certain handwriting. Somebody say handwriting. Everybody say handwriting. Ordinances, certain things that resemble the dark kingdom. Certain handwriting, maybe the map they gave you here, pam pam. They say this one I shall go, this one I will go. Or something they pierce in your nose. You are carrying certain handwriting that when she will go, we will say, Hey, now my picking with this. Today, by this prayer of today, God will remove those handwritings from your life. In the name of Jesus, blotting out all handwriting that were contrary to us, handwriting of ordinances. Colossians 2 14. Contrary to you, you enter anywhere, somebody say, Hey, we don't see our member. We don't see member of Oshu. We don't see member of Oku. We don't see member of Ijebu. Those are right I prayed for one lady at El Shaddai Bible Church. Three weeks later, she was having this. I don't know whether you know the Yoruba original Ibadan mark on her face. The mark disappeared. Any writing you are carrying will disappear. It will disappear because these are not to identify their members. Those marks will disappear tonight. Tonight, 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 tonight. In the name of Jesus. Blotting out. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. It's the present eraser. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinance. That's why some people are poor. They are so poor that they become proud of poverty. May God never allow you to be proud of poverty in the name of Jesus Christ. That is everything I want to do with money. Go and ask Calabama. Calabama say, uh, uh, he said, he said, spring house, no good. Say, now, dash house, nine cool. Can you hear poverty talking? He said, dash house, nine cool, buddy. Spring house, to the hot. You see how person who carry money go buy wine? Why go go buy wine for a bottle? 3,000, 10,000. When palm wine there. Yeah. That's Calabama talking. May God never allow you to appreciate and promote poverty in the name of Jesus Christ. Poverty is because I say poverty has no part in your life anymore in the name of Jesus. It has no part in your life anymore, forever, in the name of Jesus Christ. Number six, live in alignment with God's word. Serve God. Serve God. Exodus 36, 11. If they obey and serve they shall put their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. Serve God. Can somebody remember the tribe of Levi? Tribe of Levi was under a curse. They were never to progress. They were never to prosper. They were never to do anything good. But on the day that that that, that Baba uh, 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 Aaron made the mistake of watch of God, uh, 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 making them worship the golden calf, Moses came down from the mountain, and Moses said, "Who is on the Lord's side?" The tribe of Levi match out, we are on the Lord's side. The curse upon their life, placed by Jacob, disappeared that day. Every curse upon your life will disappear when you are on the Lord's side. Exodus 23, 25. You will serve the Lord your God, you will bless your bread and bless your water. 
It doesn't matter your name, it doesn't matter how many times you have been caused. But just choose to serve the Lord, that the blessing will be yours in the name of Jesus Christ. I think the, the, the teaching is far more important than the prayer. You can pray the prayer too if you understand what to pray. So, take your time and serve God. You can't be a member of church, you are not serving in any department. You are not an usher, you are not a cleaner, you are not a washer, you are not a choir, and you are not anything. And you think that, and then the way God will bless. God will not bless anybody that is not committed to Him. What? Go and read your Bible. People donated things to church. People serve God with their blood. What are you doing to serve God? You come to church late, you close early. Is that service? Choose to serve God. And if you don't, this world will haunt you. You can't sleep. Anytime you close your eyes to see, you are going to see me. Acquaint yourself with God and be at peace. Then you will lay up gold like dust. And you will have plenty of silver. Job 22, 21 to 30. See God, my brother. Don't follow the multitude and do the wrong. Number seven. Destruction of items. Please. In the book of Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 14, the Bible advised that if you are not serving Shongo, remove all Shongo elements from your house and burn them with fire. He said, but not just ordinary stick. Remove those sticks and burn them. If you cannot burn them, invite the man of God to come and burn them. Hey, go read Acts 19. In Acts 19, the people were already Russian Christian members, having people books that they read to study about Amok and to die. In Acts chapter 19, Apostle Paul, they collected those things they used to start, including books. The books was in today's value, hundreds of millions of naira. They roasted them. Anything you have in your house, even a piece of iron, even a ring, even a piece of paper, whatever it is that resembles the idol that your grandfather, your father, or the thing they give you in the village, and I think you know, they go Lagos, carry this thing, put for your pocket. Anytime one going time, you put for your pocket. Those things are juju. Those are the things having, making you to have misfortune. Making you to lose money. Making you not to make progress in life. Those are the things making you to try to appreciate poverty. Poverty is a cause. Anybody that lost poverty will die prematurely. Will die a non-achiever. But God created you for blessing. Hallelujah. So, go check your house. That's why those of you who are rent, renting houses, tenants, you don't know what they bury in the ground. There are certain compounds in this Lagos that if you enter with three cars, you come out, if you are able to come out with your two legs, you will be celebrating. The thank God I came out with my life. Because of what I've been buried. There are certain compounds that you can never prosper. They have sold the house. They have sold the house in the realm of the spirit. You need to be careful. Stand up, we are want, we want us to pray. Sir, God is still in heaven now, and God is watching us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't want you to feel weak. I don't want you to feel discouraged. If you're affected in any way, there is nothing that God cannot do. Hallelujah. But as teachers and preachers of the word, we need to expose to the truth, to challenge you to choose the right, so that God can help. Cast me not away from your presence, oh God. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. Rest unto me the joy of my salvation. I'll renew our spirit within Cast me not away. Yeah. 
so that we can be ready to pray. This is a very serious prayer. It's not a prayer we pray in a hurry. It's a prayer we need to prepare very well before we come to pray. Go ahead and ask the Lord for cleansing. Father, let there be a cleansing. Cleanse, oh God, your people. Push us. Shut. Our weaknesses and our shortcomings. By the anointing and by the power of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Blessed be God. Blessed be God. Blessed be God. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord, for who you are. Thank you for what you have done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now we want to confess the sins of our fathers and mothers. Both on our father's side, on our mother's side. Our grandparents, our great-grandparents, up to the three generations behind us. We want to confess their sins tonight. Some of us knew our fathers. Some of us didn't know. Some of us knew our fathers and our mothers, but we didn't know our grandparents. Some of us were, we were lucky to know our grandparents, but we didn't know what they were doing with their time and their lives. But tonight, in the realm of the spirit, you are standing in their state. You are standing for your grandmother, your grandfather, your great-grandfather, your great-grandmother, on your mother's side, on your father's side, as we confess their sins. Can you lift up your hands as we pray? Heavenly Father, louder, louder, Heavenly Father, I stand in the gap for my mother, my father, and their parents on both sides. I bring them to you in prayer. Lord, I take their sins upon myself. Oh God, I've come to confess their sins. Every form of idolatry, every form of idol worshipping that they were involved in. Father, forgive me in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh God, oh God, every incest that they have committed, every mess that they have messed with their life, oh God, that is putting me in penury, that is putting me in starvation, that is putting me in shame, oh Lord forgive me, in the name of Jesus, on their behalf, I confess my sin, I'm standing on your word, in first John chapter 1 and verse 9, the Bible says, If we confess our sins, that we are faithful and just to forgive us. Father, Lord, forgive me our sins in the name of Jesus Christ. Sir, go ahead and mention what you know your parents are doing that is wrong. What you know your grandparents were doing that is wrong. Some of them go from native doctor to native doctor. Some of them collect juju from juju to juju. Some of them bring calabash back from wherever they went to. Go ahead and mention them and ask God for cleansing and ask God for purging and ask God for washing. That tonight there's a purging, there's a washing, there's a cleansing in the name of Jesus. Then go ahead. Father Lord, we ask for cleansing. Father Lord, we ask for purging. Father Lord, we ask to God that you wash the people, that you cleanse the people, that you remove, oh God, every dent, every satanic spell from your church, from the members of the church, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father Lord, oh God, we are asking for cleansing. You are the God that washes. You are the God that purges. You are the God that cleanses. Oh, if we regard iniquity, the Lord will not hear. But tonight, Lord, not just our sins, but the sins of our ancestors, because it is through them that these causes have come to a light upon us. Every cause a lighting upon us because of the sins of our parents, they will disappear after they have been forgiven. Lord, we confess. Lord, we ask for cleansing. Lord, we ask for purging. Lord, we ask for God that you will do this thing, that your name alone be glorified, that your purpose alone will be fulfilled. Thank you, God, for what you have done. Blessed be your name, God. Blessed be your name, God. Blessed be your name of God. Blessed be your name of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now we need to give our heart to Jesus. If you have not yet 
completely handed over your life to Jesus tonight, this is the right time to do so. You will be set free, and whosoever the Son of Man has set free, is free indeed. Hallelujah. 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 If you have given your life to Christ, we are just going to pray a prayer of reinforcement to re-announce and to declare that you belong to Jesus and to tell the devil that he has no hold over your life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Lift up your hand and say, Heavenly Father. Louder, louder, Heavenly Father. I belong to you. I belong to you. From the crown of my head to the soles of my feet, I belong to you. The Bible says, in Romans chapter 8 and verse 31, say, if God be for us, who can be against us? God is for me. No devil can be against me. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, you are my Father. I trust in you. The Bible says, in Galatians chapter 3, and verse 13, that Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law. I am redeemed from every cause. The Bible says that, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I say I am redeemed. I am the redeemed of the Lord. No cause can I light upon my life anymore. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare every cause in my life is terminated now. In the name of Jesus, causes are terminated now. It can never alight upon my life anymore. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, there is a God in heaven. While we were yet sinners, the Bible says, Christ died for us. You died to set me free. I decree myself I am free. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says, Whosoever the Son of Man has set free, is free indeed. God has set me free. I am free indeed. I am free indeed. I am free indeed. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay. So, we move to the next prayer, renunciation. You disconnect yourself. As you are disconnecting yourself, see yourself just like a block of fire, a block of light, disconnected from your original family and then being blocked into the family of God. Hallelujah. That will terminate the cause. The cause will be looking for uh, who is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where is that person of attack? They will not see me because I'm shining with fire. Fire now connected to Jehovah. Ben Jehovah. Hallelujah. Lift up your right hand and say, Heavenly Father. In the name of Jesus. Louder, I'm standing on your wall. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17, the Bible says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Say, all things have passed away. And behold, all things have become new. Therefore, my past is past. I disconnect myself from the attached family. Mention your own family. I disconnect myself now from the attached family. And I connect myself to the family of Jehovah. Therefore, I am no longer a member of the attached family. Every place in that family can never come to me. Every shame in that family can never come to me. Every disappointment of that family can never touch me. Every poverty of that family can never come near me. I disconnect myself. Every foolishness of that family can never come to me. Every idolatry of that family can never come to me. I am a member of the family of God. A member of the family of God. Jesus is the vine, and I am the branch. I bring for the fruit of righteousness. I bring for the fruit of holiness. I bring for the fruit of godliness. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Therefore now, I am not under any cause. Jesus is not under any cause. He is my vine. And I drink from him. 
I am not under any cause. From now, every cause are lighting upon my life, terminated forever. In the name of Jesus Christ, is terminated forever by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every cause of poverty, every cause of divorce, every cause of barrenness, terminated forever. Every cause of struggling and having nothing is terminated forever. Every cause of begging before you can eat is terminated forever. Every cause of barrenness, every cause of poverty, every cause of back upon spirit is terminated forever. Every cause of houselessness, every cause of having nowhere to lay my head is terminated forever. Every cause of begging before I eat is terminated forever. Every cause of disease and sickness I inherited from my previous parents is terminated forever. Every cause of asthma terminated forever. Every cause of glaucoma terminated forever. Every cause of hypertension terminated forever. Every cause of diabetes terminated forever in the name of Jesus I stand by faith I walk by faith I'm connected to Christ oh God uh, he brought me to this world to enjoy he said he brought me here that I may enjoy enjoyment is my portion I settle for nothing less I settle for nothing else enjoyment is my portion in Christ in God in the name of Jesus Christ never will I be a beggar anymore Never will I beg for food. Never will I cry for where to sleep. Never will I lack money in my pocket. Never again. Never again. Never again. Never again. Never again. Never again. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Is there anything in your body, around you, or about you that anybody will see and know that you are a member of poverty, struggle, or a shameful person? You can't pass your exam. Is there anything around you anybody can see tonight? The Bible says, Colossians 2.14, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was contrary to us. Anything contrary to your progress? Contrary to your success, it could just be a name, it could just be a, 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 the way you talk, it could just be your location, it could just be your brain disappointing you, you are not able to cope with your mates. Anything that makes them to laugh at you is an handwriting. It's an handwriting of wickedness, handwriting of ordinance. 44 plus 44, he says 99, everybody has. It's a shame. Tonight. Those handwriting will be blotted out in Jesus' name. He said, He blotted out those handwriting. And to them away, I made a public show of the devil triumphing over them in it. Colossians 2.15. God will make a public show of the devil concerning your life in the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to pray and say, This handwriting, get out of my life now in Jesus' name. Is it the way you talk? Is it your in inability to understand? Lack of comprehension? Lack of coordination? Lack of, of presentation? Is there something in you that is shaped, that is making you to be stagnated, degraded, frustrated, that makes you not to compete with your mates? Is there anything in you? Now! Go! Anything that stands for frustration, depression, oppression, subjugation, and an embarrassing posture. Go now, go, go, go now, go now, go now, go now. The people of God are in the place of prayer. I say, go by fire, 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 go by fire. Anything that makes your life life to lose alignment. Go, go. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now you are going to pray for yourself. You want to serve God. Sir, <laughs> you need to see how people are serving God. Unfortunately, we are not serving. Many of us are not serving. Many of us are not serving God. When last did you go out to preach the gospel? How many souls have you won since you were born again? Many of us have never won one single soul. How we say we are serving God? What are you doing in the church? You're not in the choir, you're not in the church. What are you doing? After this service, come and see me. 
pastor, I want to serve in the church. I will help you get the department where you serve. Rest of the thing. See, you can't force God to bless you. God is a just God. God is a God of equity and justice. God is a God. No matter how much His compassionate and His grace is full, He is still a God of judgment. Who want to pray and say, Lord, help me to serve you. If you will pay and serve him, you will spend your days in prosperity. That scripture is for you. Why is poverty pursuing you? You are not serving God. Take time and pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. This is your own prayer. Some of us are no longer any cause. We refuse to serve God. And poverty has become our best friend. One coconut you are eating is seven times. To use it to drink at it because of poverty. Take time and ask God to help you. You want to serve God. You want to serve God. You want to serve God. Pray for yourself. Be honest. Pray for yourself. Father, Lord, your people have come to serve you. Lord, you say, if you if we can serve the Lord our God, you counted 12, 12 blessings in the in Exodus 23. Oh God, you will take away sickness from the midst of us. You will bless our water. You bless our prayer. The number of our days you will fulfill. You don't allow anything to cut our lamp short. You put our fear upon our enemy. Lord, help us to serve you. Lord, help us to serve you. Lord, help us to serve you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.